Florida, God's waiting room. It's home to theme parks, the Everglades, your peepaw, and of course, Florida man. Police report before committing a sexual act on a tree, yelling he was a Suspects god. Suspects tried to start a fire with spaghetti sauce. Was karate kicking those birds when attacked two people? Every week there's a new headline out of Florida. Wild, shocking, unnecessarily sexual. Masturbating at a bus stop told police he was Captain Kirk. But have we ever stopped to ask the question, why? Something's happening to men in Florida, and it can't just be a coincidence. As a future Pulitzer-winning journalist, it's my responsibility to uncover the truth, to reveal what lies beneath the swamp, to answer the question, what makes a man Florida man? Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. Florida man. First thing I did was some heavy back channeling, mostly on Craigslist and Facebook. I needed to locate some of these real-life Florida men. First up was Robbie. Last July, he ran into a liquor store with a live alligator for some reason. Florida man Robbie Stratton decided to bring an alligator with him while making a beer run. Yeah, I definitely regret it. It was, it was stupid. Talk to me about the night that you became Florida man. Can't really tell you much about that night. There's too much alcohol involved that night. Not just alcohol, though. It's a, there's probably a deep-rooted conspiracy. No, it was alcohol. What was it about Florida that made you do what you did? It was hot, it was humid. The heat makes you do crazy things. The heat makes you do crazy things. Alcohol makes you do crazy things. But isn't there something that all Florida men share? There's something behind it. Mental health issues? No, that couldn't be it. And this wasn't the only man affected. He's been hit with charges after pictures in this video showing him handling an alligator, which he posted, were seen by law enforcement. A real name, Jordan Bedford, but I go by the alligator man. Okay. Um, alligator man, what's the common factor among all Florida men? We all are different. Well, I'm, I'm different from the rest because I do the wrong thing in the right way, if that makes sense. No. No? So you're not from Florida, so you don't understand my language, what I'm talking right now, but... I do, the, I do the wild things. Anything you think of, I'll probably do it. Catch, like I tell anything? you, anything. I catch gators. Anything? Anything. Well, not anything, uh, but basically anything when it really? comes to the reptile animals, mainly the alligators, though. Wait, well, like here in Florida, you're not allowed to catch an alligator. I mean, I didn't know that before, but I know now. I just had a little fun, put them on a the leash and dance with the last one they seen. What kind of dancing did you do with the alligator? The alligator man dance. You got to kick your feet. Spell alligator in the sand as you're dancing, as you're going around, you spell an alligator and you end it with the stomp. The alligator man got a commercial too. A you social, have a commercial? Yeah, he got a commercial. He got a theme song. Everybody seemed like, na 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 na, it's the alligator man. That is 100% the McDonald's jingle. Well, it's the alligator man's on now. I see what you're saying about doing the wrong thing in the right way and how it works. It, it worked. Where do you find alligators in Florida? If there's a lake, there's a gator. I promise you. That's, so that's everywhere. There's gators everywhere. These chairs are very hard to get up out of. She gone. So many Florida men. So many f***ing alligators. Surely there's a Florida man who's normal. Hi, Missy. I am Captain Silky Silvertips, and I hail out of the island called Marathon, down in the Florida Keys. Cool. And you're a pirate? Well, I'm a pirate most of the day. When I'm not, I'm a landscaper. What could a landscaper pirate possibly have done? A man dressed as a pirate is accused of shooting his gun on the Seven Mile Bridge in South Florida. So I took out my flintlocks oh. to shoot at the sun. Now, mind you, there was no projectiles. Yeah, you can put that. You don't simply gunpowder, right? Just put it away. Why do you defend what you did? Well, I defend my Second Amendment right. Your Second Amendment right to shoot a gun into the sun? Yeah, why not? How exactly did you become a Florida man? To become a Florida man, you must first be a Florida boy and experience the life that it gives you as a boy to hone your skills to be, in my case, a Florida pirate man. Have you always been a Florida man? Ah, no. Originally, I hailed from Chicago. Oh, so you're a transplant. I was then. But since then, I've lived my entire life here in the Keys. What do you think is behind every Florida man? Must be in the water that we're drinking down here to drive us to what we do. It's a water conspiracy. And uh, women. Women? Yeah. They're the ones that drive you crazy. And while I was running away from these unusual men, I was heading towards some new ideas. There had to be a common thread. What was I missing? There was something different about this state, 
so many Florida man stories filling the news. Did Florida reporters know something I didn't? I went to an undisclosed orange grove to meet a very casually dressed journalist to find out. What can you tell me about these Florida man stories? I mean, I have my own research, but sure. you just give me yours just so oh, we can compare notes. Yeah, I mean, they are true. People do weird things here in Florida, and uh, it gets into the news. Yeah. Uh, but no the, shit. Yeah, a major factor is that we went from being the least populated southern state in 1940 to now being the third most populous state in the country. Sure. Uh, we've got this nerd knew a lot about Florida. Florida. And while he mostly rambled, I was connecting the dots. We built tons of homes everywhere where there used to be just wilderness. If there's a lake, there's a gate. You can get just about any kind of weapon you want here. This is me night. 49th among the states in funding for mental health treatment. Mental health issues? Another big factor is Florida was the first state in the nation to pass this uh, landmark law called the Sunshine Act that says that basically any government document is available for reporters to go in and see. Police reports, for instance, are all open for inspection by reporters. And that's when it hit me, the missing piece of the puzzle. By a guy named Emery Ridge. Shut, shut, shut up, shut up. That's it. What's it? It's the Sunshine Act. Yeah? It's not what causes Florida man, it's why we hear about Florida man. Yeah, pretty much. I just figured it out all by myself. I'm a genius. Florida man has been the butt of countless jokes, but maybe that's not fair. Well, this guy was pretty weird. The Sunshine Act makes it easier to discover Florida Man stories, but I was just scratching the surface. We may not hear about them as much, but it turns out there are Florida men in every state. We tried to shoot the moon. dog shoots its owner. at the emoji. And while Florida will always be America's petri dish of batshit behavior, the truth is, there's a little Florida man in all of us. Water, a.k.a. lazy seltzer. We all drink water every day, but recently in Florida, someone tried to turn the water into a weapon. Now to a shocking case of computer hacking in Pinellas County, Florida. Investigators are trying to hunt down the person who tried to poison a public water supply remotely. The plant operator monitoring the water plant in the Tampa Bay city of Oldsmar noticed computer breaches starting at about 8 a.m. Friday morning. The hacker was controlling the computer system's mouse and was able to increase the level of sodium hydroxide in the water supply from about 100 parts per million to more than 11,000 parts per million. This is obviously a significant and potentially dangerous increase. Uh, sodium hydroxide, also known as lye, is the main ingredient in liquid drain cleaners. If ingested in large amounts, sodium hydroxide can cause vomiting, chest, and abdominal pain. Fortunately, a plant operator immediately reduced the levels back to what was safe. Okay, this is insane. A hacker was this close to poisoning the water supply of a county in Florida. I mean, luckily it wouldn't have worked anyway, you know, since Floridians don't even drink water. They get all the hydration they need from Red Bull and whatever this is. Tastes like blue. But not only was this hacking evil, it was also just lazy. You wanna poison the water supply? You roll your ass out of bed and pee in the reservoir like they did in the good old days. You lazy ass hacking bitch. And by the way, is it just me? Or is it weird that the computer for Florida's water system even lets you pump that much sodium hydroxide into the water supply? Like, I mean, forget the hackers. Should the computer even have an option to poison the entire county? At least make it so you have to click on all the squares with street lights first. Florida, it's America's Hawaii. A tropical paradise full of endless vacations, pristine white sand beaches, and exotic wildlife. Until now. Dead marine life is washing up on thousands of miles of beach. Florida Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency. Earlier this week, bathtub beach closed, swimming now off limits. With South Florida's beaches under attack, there was only one place to turn. The finest detectives Miami has ever seen, Crockett and Tubbs. But they didn't return our calls, so you get us. Oh, there it is, a dead fish. It's pretty gross. Yeah, what does this smell like to you? It smells like dead fish. No, it's deeper. Back up that fish. Roy, I wanna hang at the beach. You'll hang at the beach when we close this case. Come on. I hit up an expert who's been following this case closely. Roy calls him an expert. I call him a guy standing between me and my vacation. 
We have an ecological meltdown happening right now in South Florida. You've got fish kills. You've got toxic fumes so bad that beachgoers can't breathe. So whose fault is this? Algae. Algae? Algae's everywhere. My friends at Whole Foods sprinkle algae on the smoothie. Well, this is toxic algae. The algae proliferate with nutrients in the water, and uh, you know, it makes it it's toxic for, for wildlife. Great. It's, Case closed, let's go to the beach. Thank you, Mike. No, 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 no. What are you doing? We found the killer. We gotta work the case. Can you describe the algae? Well, here on the East Coast, we got blue-green algae that just sort of covers the entire estuary. You can kind of imagine a giant blob of stinky guacamole. It looked like guacamole? Damn, he wasn't kidding. That's some nasty, gloppy guac, and it was spreading. The algae has actually grown. It seems it's only getting worse. We have to see this algae up close, but it's like 120 degrees in Florida with the top down. It's too hot for this wig. The best way to find this algae was to take a little fishing trip deep into one of the canals on Florida's Gulf Coast. So this is what's killing our fish. It's not just killing the fish. This stuff could kill a human. Oh, what? This stuff could kill a human. Absolutely. Just being around it right now, you can smell it. You'll notice a tightening in your chest. It gets hard to breathe. Is that why you're wearing that silly thing around your neck? Yes. If we're in here for a little while, pull this up over my face yeah. to help try to at least filter a little bit of the particulate out of the air. We should get the Let's get the out of here. Yeah, let's let's can we just talk somewhere else? Well, this turned out to be the worst fishing trip of all time. This algae's so bad that its toxins could lead to permanent liver damage. Plus, it's been hurting countless businesses connected to Florida's number one industry, tourism. This year I've probably lost 60 or 70 percent of my business. That's a lot. Okay, but you ever think that maybe your business is dropping because this boat is lame? I don't see one bottle of Prosecco. I don't see a hot tub. Do you even watch Pitbull videos? Yeah. Not really. But Chris says the problem isn't just his uncool boat, it's what's behind the algae. And when we finally discovered what was causing this algae, we couldn't believe it. There's three basic sources, agriculture, urban runoff, and then the legacy phosphorus um, from the sugar industry. Sugar? Sugar. What's in this? It's helping to kill fish on the beach. Yes. A sugar packet is so small. Delicious. How is that the case? The farming practices. Big Sugar spent decades pumping pollution into Florida's waterways. And the algae loves these pollutants, kind of like how white women love Greek yogurt and goat yoga. Has anyone ever reached out to the sugar industry and just said, stop doing that? Stop doing that, sugar. Yes. Yes. And? You need to understand how sugar controls the legislature. In the state of Florida, the biggest polluters tend to be among the biggest political contributors. So it's like the mafia, but like delicious. Yes. Yep. Florida's sugar industry slipped over $57 million to state politicians on both sides of the aisle. This guy, the commissioner of agriculture, took in almost a million in 2018 alone. People are just, they've had it. Between the red tide and the blue-green algae. Oh, la, 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 la. What's red tide? Red tide is another kind of algae that lead to fish kills. Blue algae, green algae, red algae. You guys have the skittles of algae. But the red algae has nothing to do with sugar, right? It, it does. Pollution makes it worse. Oh, let's go to the beach. Let's go to the beach. You ready to go to the all beach? Right, we'll get them out. Yeah, Thank let's you. Go to the beach. Until all this sugar money gets out of politics, or Florida's government gets serious about the environment, Florida's white sand beaches are in danger. But as for us, we finally got our vacation with the help of a few wardrobe adjustments. Cue the outro montage. The Parkland teenagers are committed to fighting gun violence. In fact, they are so committed that yesterday they did something no rational person would do. They took a bus to Tallahassee. <laughs> I know, crazy. But it was for a good reason. They were lobbying the Florida House of Representatives for a ban on assault weapons. And because it's Florida, you can guess how that went. As the students arrived at the Florida Capitol, the Florida legislature showed just how tough changing those laws is going to be, voting to not even take up debate on an assault weapons ban. 36 yeas, 71 nays, Mr. Speaker. 
So the motion is not adopted. Shame, are you serious? These kids drove all the way to Tallahassee and you won't even debate gun control. Like, maybe it's just me, but where I'm from, when someone comes to your house asking for help, you don't turn them away. You do the right thing. You turn off the lights and pretend you're not home, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's called an African hello. <laughs> Seriously, that's pretty shitty what they did, but, but, but don't get angry. Don't get angry, because <laughs> you're gonna need that anger for when you find out what they did pass less than an hour later. Pornography is being declared as a health risk, at least it is here in the state of Florida. The State House of Representatives approved a resolution for this yesterday. They goal, they say, is to protect Floridians, especially teenagers, from any kind of adult content. Wow, guys. <laughs> Porn control instead of gun control. Yeah, I think you guys are worried about the wrong kind of mass shooting. <laughs> and, and listen, I know it's easy for politicians to go after porn, you know? It doesn't have the power the gun lobby does. Like, there's no NRA for porn going, you can take my porn when you pry it from my warm, lotion-filled hands. <laughs> but still, come on, have some common sense. Your state is reeling from a shooting. Now is not the time to debate adult films. In fact, just ask Florida State Representative Carlos Guillermo Smith. He was furious that the House was choosing to focus on protecting kids from porn instead of from guns. I'm curious as to the prioritization of this bill and how urgent of an issue this is. Has anyone ever been physically handicapped, like for example, confined to a wheelchair and unable to work as a result of porn being such a major health risk? Okay, I, I hear what he's saying, but I mean, if the porn is good, then... <laughs> Maybe you will end up in a wheelchair. I mean, here's me after I got broadband. That's all I'm saying. It's just, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Representative. I'm, I'm sorry, I was rude, I was rude. What, what were you saying? Has any first responder ever needed to seek counseling for PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, as a result of their maybe addiction to pornography? Uh, again, I'm on your side. <laughs> But have you seen Two Girls, One Cup? Uh, you wanna talk about PTSD? I still can't look at frozen yogurt without getting a hard on. But still, despite all reason, despite all reason, the day ended with the Florida House basically saying that it thinks guns are safer than sex on camera. And you could choose to be mad about that but I prefer to be excited about how this new thinking will change porn in Florida. Did somebody here order a big, hard gun? It couldn't have been me. I'm already packing. Oh, my God. Florida is under attack by illegal immigrants. And unlike Mexicans, none of these are good people. In fact, they're fish. So this is a lionfish and it's an invasive species and it's decimating Florida's reefs. The lionfish invasion started when some idiots flushed this exotic aquarium fish into the ocean. And now they are multiplying out of control. They may look beautiful, but they are deadly. All these top dorsal fins will sting you. This down here will sting you. You know, it really looks like a a dragon from, uh, what's that show, HBO? Uh, Insecure. Conservationist Cortland Hunt is on a mission to save Florida's reefs. What people don't realize is that the economic impact of our reefs is in the billions of dollars a year. People in the fishing and diving industries know that lionfish could devastate Florida's fisheries because they prey on 80% of fish on the reef, destroying the food chain. It's like if halfway through Finding Nemo, everybody died. <laughs> But Cortland has a solution. We've developed a device to kill the lionfish. And what is this device? So we modified a Glock handgun to shoot fish underwater. <laughs> you think this is a joke, but this is real. 
Wait, what? You can't catch them any other way. You gotta go down and shoot them. Of course. What could be more Florida than standing your ground for Mother Nature? Hey, you wanna hold it? No, I don't want my fingerprints on that. But Cortland stands by his science. So on this, when you fire it, the pressure comes out all at one time. So these are muzzle brakes that go onto the end of the gun. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're making it bigger. Bigger is usually better, we found, in general. Not always. Bigger. Depends on how you use it, really. Bigger is almost always better. Almost always, but not in every situation. Then he took me to an Olympic-sized shooting range to demonstrate some of what he does. And guess what? It's stupid. What do you say to critics who might say that you are, I don't know, an idiot? A redneck, a dumbass, who's just shooting up the oceans, and you're a psychopath. You know, criticisms like that. There's a war going on on our reefs in Florida. What are you talking about? This sounds like something you'd do in a first-person shooter if you're just f***ing around. This redneck John Wick thinks he's gonna save the environment with a gun? What's next? We nuke illiteracy? Someone must have a more intelligent solution. Uh, my name is Yuan Wong, and we're building a robot that, uh, hunts invasive linefish. That's what I'm talking about. There's just something about this guy. I don't know what it is, but I like him. Yuan Wang has founded a startup dedicated to building a lionfish terminator. Kind of. This is a killer robot? Um, it, work in progress, yeah. It looks like a trash can with arms. Still, better than shooting a fish with a gun. It identifies the lionfish, then it shocks it, and it will suck it into a containment unit. But there was something weird about it. If you just start, you know, sucking, um, with the rim-driven propeller, then they'll just try to swim away. Whereas if you put them to sleep, you just kind of get two probes on either side of them and stun them. Dude, I think you invented a fish sex robot. Uh, no, I don't, I don't think we did. Yeah, I think you did, man. And trust me, I know sex robots. Oh, I thought this was just like one of my anatomically correct R2-D2s. Nope, it's a ruthless killing machine. But it's 2018. You can't just go exterminating an invasive species without first checking with the animal woke police. PETA. I mean, if a lethal solution is going to be used, the priority should be that the animal doesn't suffer. What is PETA's stance on, let's say, an uh, underwater robot that electrocutes fish and then sucks it into its body via a suction vacuum fin and brings it up to the surface where it suffocates to death? I mean, just hypothetically speaking. Yeah, that, that sounds very inhumane. Wait, why? Um, electrocuting any animal is, is extremely cruel. What about electric eels? Um, they can give it, but they can't take it. We are quite opposed to that. So I forced this sex robot hater to look at the alternative. Cortland Hunt's dumb YouTube videos. Look, I know the music sucks, but just watch, please. The gun looks like it might be the least cruel method, but I, like I said, I, I couldn't absolutely speak to that without more information. So you would need a lot more fish brutally murdered before you could tell whether or not this was cruel? Yeah, I, I would just say that it looks the fastest. What? So the stupidest solution is actually the smartest solution? Okay, so sorry I called you the stupidest person I've ever met. Uh, this is a Florida-themed gift basket to make up for it. I actually already have most of this stuff, but thank you. Time to get down to the arduous task of conserving our fragile ecosystem. Woo! Let's kill some fish! Wow, The Daily Show finally found a problem that could be solved by a good guy with a gun. And I was right there with him. I mean, not in the water of the poisoned fish. I'm not an idiot. Oh, ho, ho, you came to the wrong reef, mother. Where are you going? You're taking dirt naps. Yeah, I'll be body bagging your whole team. For the earth. Florida. It gets a bad rap for crazy senior citizens, crystal meth, gator attacks, toxic algae, Mar a Lago, sinkholes, oh, and lightning strikes. But now, it's also making a name for itself for giving ex-felons their right to vote back. The Sunshine State just gained more than one million voters. Voters agreed to restore voting rights to convicted felons except murderers and sexual offenders. It was one of the many amendments on the ballot, Amendment 4. Desmond Mead is the director of the Florida Rights Restoration Coalition that helped pass Amendment 4. 1.4 million people back voting, boom, bam. Mission accomplished. Good job, bro. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. 
We had uh, legislators in Florida mandated the payment of fines and fees before they're able to register to vote. I see why Florida's shaped like a dick. Because they oh. always trying to f*** you over. That's right. The Republican-controlled legislature swooped in to ruin the party by making re-enfranchised voters pay for the right to vote. Why, you ask? The laws that these politicians put in place adversely impact people who are poor and minority communities. So basically, this bill affects black Democrats. This law affects people from all walks of life, from all political persuasions. At the end of the day, we live in a state where presidential elections have been decided by less than 600 votes, right? We have one week left to raise sufficient money, right, to allow a significant number of returning citizens to be able to participate in this election. So this effort is entirely nonpartisan and not aimed at helping poor black people? I didn't believe Desmond. And then I met Gary. Man, let me tell you, if it wasn't for the coalition, you know, it would be very difficult for me to do that and be able to vote in November. I think it's very important for everybody out there and with that record to move on. Forget about your past and try to improve your life from there on out. When I was 60 years old, put myself through college. I can do it. They can do it. Well, that's great. So now you can get out there and vote for the Democratic nominee, Joe Biden. I'm voting for Trump. I'm sorry, you say what? I'm voting for Trump. Hang on a second, man. This is a connection. You're breaking up. I know who'd you say you're voting for? I'm voting for Donald Trump. And it's not just Gary. His wife Erica's on the Trump train too. I voted for Trump in 2016, and I will vote for Trump in 2020. Well, thank goodness you can vote for a Republican in spite of Republicans trying to block you from voting for a Republican. Absolutely. Amen. Right on. But a disproportionate number of returning citizens that would get the right to vote again are black. Don't you think having a law in the books that mandates that they pay fines and fees first is a little, just a little racist? I don't believe that at all. Can I answer that? Oh, absolutely. I say no. You want to know why? All lives matter. We all bleed the same. We're all children of God. If the people we're fighting for to stop voter suppression decide to instead vote for the guys doing the suppressing, how are we ever going to fix this country? Roy, who the hell is that? It's me, John Legend. John Legend? Man, how the hell you get in my Zoom? I'm talking to you through the power of music. Uh, okay. Anyway, listen, John. How do we save democracy if the people who get the right to vote back are voting for the same people that are suppressing their right to vote? We have to learn that voting isn't a privilege for a select, virtuous few. It's a right for every American citizen. No matter if they messed up in life, they deserve the right to vote. But John, we only have a week left to register people, not to mention the hundreds of millions in fines left to pay. This is impossible, man. Listen, Roy, we cannot give up. This election is too important. I need everybody out there. You got to donate, please, to pay the fines and fees. Save, 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 save our democracy. See. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Zoom sing-alongs do not work, Roy. Oh. We are off beat. Is, is 41 too old to, to learn the piano? Yes, it's too old, Roy. Give up on your dreams. Award winner John Legend had me convinced. We can still make a difference by helping returning citizens register to vote. Even Gary. Yes, Gary. Our best friends are black. Do you know Gary sung at their wedding? Man, I was the only cracker there. Gary, I'm happy that you had your right to vote restored. And, and I hope you execute that right to vote at the polls on November 12th. Isn't it November 3rd? I promise you it's the 12th. All across America, eccentric freedom lovers have been protesting to reopen the country. Now beaches are the latest battleground, and Florida's 
are open for business. Northwest Florida beaches are back open. Hundreds came out to soak up the sun, sand, and surf. I love the beaches being open. This is just wonderful. But while many Floridians are enjoying their God-given right to beach, one of them has a killer protest of his own. In Northwest Florida, one lawyer took a bold approach to express his concern. Thank you. Yeah, I'm here today to make a point that we need to, I think it's premature that we open our beaches. But who was this strange Florida man? Did terrorizing beachgoers actually make a difference? To find out, I made a date with death. My name is Daniel Ufelder. I'm a lawyer and I'm the Florida Grim Reaper. I, I'm sorry, can you remove your hood? It's kind of hard to process this. Remove my hood, okay. Yeah. All right, I guess that's better. So what are you doing dressed as death going to the beaches in Florida? Well, we have a deadly virus that's killed over 75,000 people. And I think people need to be staying at home and taking precautions and not flooding our beaches in our state. Death visiting the beaches has got to be one of the top 1,000 strangest things that have happened in Florida this week. Good point. Daniel's been visiting beaches as death for almost a month now, mostly not well received. The public here, they're none too pleased to see his presence here. I think he should go somewhere else and, 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 and protest because he don't belong here. Daniel, why do Floridians want to go to the beach so badly? Well, I wanted to go to the beach. I love, I mean, I'm a Floridian. It's kind of like, it's just part of our DNA. It's just who we are. To me, this seems like a perfect time for Floridians to learn a new hobby, you know, like how to read. Uh, uh, Florida gets a bad rap. Floridians get a bad rap and the Grim Reapers get a bad rap. And I'm trying to fix both those things. So Daniel, when should the beaches open? When we have enough testing, enough data, and enough preparation. You want the government of Florida to use testing, data, and information when in the past they've never even thought about using those things. Yes, this is a situation where I think that our government is making a choice to not do the right thing. Do you think you're making a difference? I think I've given a little hope to people that are seeing all these crazy protesters with guns and Confederate flags and Nazi flags. And, and the Grim Reaper costume. I mean, I don't have a gun with me. I don't have, I'm not at a state house in Michigan with a gun. The Grim Reaper is trying to preserve life. Daniel, is death really the best way to communicate this message of caution and temperance? I mean, everybody dies. Should we really fear death or you? I think when you have 75,000 people die within a very short period of time and it doesn't seem to be slowing down, yes, it is. this is the only message that we need to deal with. That's, sorry, it, what, hearing Daniel say that doesn't work for me. Would you mind just putting the hood back on and the mask and delivering that same message? Um, so, Death, are you really the best way to communicate caution and temperance? Yeah, we need the beaches closed so people don't die. This virus... As Death spoke unto me about the need for social distancing, I realized that protesting to keep things closed could be helpful. Even though Death is scaring the hell out of sunbathers, at least he's wearing a mask. And maybe there was a deeper meaning. The one constant in life that death is always among us, ready to ferry our souls across that dark river of time. Maybe death is teaching us that- I just want them to close the damn beaches. You know, having the opportunity that not everybody gets to speak to death has changed my life. I wish I could hug you right now. I wish I could come down there right now and wrap my sweaty no, hand around- No, stay there. Do not come to death. Why are you not getting the message I'm sending? Stay away from the beaches of Florida, please. Oh, I get it, Death. And hopefully, Florida does too.